I'm Akshay Shah, and in the next seven minutes, I'm going to make all of you gRPC experts. And we're going to do that by handwriting a gRPC server using just the standard library. So this is gRPC. It's gRPC Go, the library, and it is complex. And it's everywhere. It's in Kubernetes, it's in etcd, maybe it's in your own application. And if this were the usual intro to gRPC talk, I'd walk you through how to twiddle the most common knobs and levers. But this is not your average intro to gRPC talk. Instead, we're going to cut through all this complexity by throwing this machine away and writing our own. And we're going to start with just a few gears, the heart of the machine. And the heart of gRPC is the wire protocol. It's just HTTP. And we know HTTP. We can do this. Now, as we build, we're going to keep two things in mind. gRPC is designed to support streaming of both requests and responses, and it's designed to have pluggable encodings. And in particular, we want to support both protocol buffers and JSON. So we're going to start with a REST handle, just using net HTTP and encoding JSON. And for many of you, this is very familiar code. This handler creates a pet resource, and we model our data using a simple Go struct. We have the usual HTTP.handler signature. We do a little bit of validation to make sure that we're getting a post with the application JSON content type. And then we do some marshaling and unmarshaling using encoding JSON. Nothing unusual. And it works. We can call this handler with curl. But what happens if we imagine the server wants to stream some responses back? So maybe we have three pets we want to send. At this point, the client has a problem. In order to figure out where each pet begins and ends, it needs to be parsing JSON. It looks for an opening curly brace, it interprets the JSON, it looks for a closing curly, and then it unmarshals that object and hands it off to your application code. This is no good for gRPC. We want to be encoding agnostic. So how can we build a client that doesn't need to know about the encoding in order to find message bounds? We steal an old trick, and we envelope the messages. We add a five-byte prefix. And this is not very complicated. The first byte, that's eight bits, are eight bitwise flags. They're used for compression, for gRPC web, some other stuff. We're not going to worry about the flags today. The next four bytes, 32 bits, encode the length of the message as a big endian uint32. And then we have a bunch of bytes with our pet. Once we put this structure in place, the server and the client, um, especially the client, can unmarshal messages without knowing anything about their encoding, because it can use this length number to skip ahead as it likes. Let's integrate this into our REST handler. So we write a little bit of extra code. First, we write a little utility type to represent this prefix. It's just a five-byte array with some helper methods that use encoding slash binary to manage encoding integers to bytes. This is example code, so the error handling is bad. I don't handle overflows, underflows, or any of the other things you would want, but it gets the point across. Next, we need to change our content type. We now have these binary prefix blocks intermingled with our JSON. So naturally, our content type changes to application slash gRPC plus JSON. OK, no biggie. Then we actually use the prefixes when we're marshaling and unmarshaling. This is a little bit tedious, but it's just managing a handful of extra byte slices. And at this point, we are so close to being done. Okay. But as usual in Go, we have to think a little bit harder about our error handling. What happens if our server runs into an error marshalling the third message. At this point, the server has already sent the HTTP status code to the client. We sent to 200, then we had an error. 
we can't take our 200 back and replace it with a 500. It's disappeared into the ether already. So instead, what gRPC does is it encodes the status code as an HTTP trailer. And trailers are just headers that come after the body. So we can do that too. Here we have our little handler, and at the bottom, we use the standard library to send the gRPC-status and gRPC-message trailers. And this half slide of code is a fully functional gRPC handler. You can call it with gRPC Go, gRPC Java, gRP curl, or any other gRPC client. And that is everything. That is the heart of this machine. You understand these two gears, you understand the wire protocol, and that means you understand all of it. Everything else is a design trade-off. And you might ask yourself, hey, maybe with these two gears, I could build a different machine. I could build something a little bit smaller, maybe a little simpler. And if that appeals to you, you should check out connect.build or come talk to us at the bot booth. All this code, including a handwritten client and an example of calling this handler with gRPC Go, are available on GitHub. Thank you for your time.